and I more than willing, like I said, commit my, I've committed my time. I will be giving every week for the actual instruction. I will give every week for the actual preparation of the work. And I also, like I told Mr. Clark and Mr. Maloney, I will donate 100 of my common interest books to the cause. That is a very good thing. But I, I, it's not, what I like about this program, you know, I teach common interest lessons. It's, it's my community service, I say, I do it. I don't, I don't go physically now. I prepare the work and send it to Spikestown, where the Kiwanis North do it for the children in that area. Those that know me and hear me talk, hear me talk with the Bow Road all the time. That's where I live as a teenager, over close by the stadium. And I go there every Wednesday evening at Big Picas and Brokers and do the same lessons for the children of that area, the Spooner, so Long Gap, or Short area. And we started two weeks ago. I, do, I work with Pinelands Creative Workshop to do the same thing at Parkinson School for the children from the, from the Wildy Pine area. And so adding this is not a big thing. I don't think four, eight weeks, eight hours a week is any way going to be too taxing. What am I going to do? Stay home and watch TV? Or go to a shop and do something that people don't want me to do? So, you know, <laughs> or, or, you know, so just this, I enjoy this. I, can, I have more fun than the children. But what the, the little twist on this particular um, initiative, it's not just the teaching of common entrance lessons. We, we have, well, all the years I recognize that oftentimes there are some children who may, although you're teaching them, their reading skills are not at the place where you want them to be. And we have the services of another union member, a teacher, a young, bright, talented, and, and really, really qualified reading practitioner by the name of Gina Burnham, Miss Gina Burnham. She teaches at Gordon Greenwich Primary School. And she has come on board and she will use her, her skills to do a program of reading intervention. Whereas I will be pretty pushing the English and maths, those children who have the special needs, Miss Burnham will be there to give that assistance. I really want to thank her. I know here where we jump off into the Second Chances and you be Second Chances Institute, where you know in, in this country lots of children, lots of children leave school at ages 16 and 17 with no certification or one or two certificates and can do almost nothing. They find themselves on the block. They find themselves being pulled by all different types of distractions that are, that are no good for our country. And we have decided that we will have a virtual day school, a virtual day school where children could come and be taught. In sp we have not identified the curriculum yet, but certainly the basic things like English language and mathematics, integrated science, um, social studies will probably form part of it. Um, and at, at least give them an opportunity to get two or three or four certificates to make themselves more marketable. I think the, 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 the thrust of the National Public Workers is, is so good. It, it puts that human face <coughs> on trade unionism. Like I said to Mr. Clark on more than one occasion, we are going to continue as a union to, to fight for salary increases. We shall continue to fight for improving the conditions of service. But we're not going to get the same degree and extent that we've gotten over the years. So we need to broaden our program as a union. I think the President and the General Secretary are very, very, very supportive of it. And, and they offer services to our members and our members' children. And I think that this push by the National Public Workers will always have my support. I, I am a very, I'm a strange position today because yesterday, yesterday the 7th, I celebrated my 39th year as a teacher. And I, <laughs> 7th of October 1975, I walked into Form 13 at the St. Lucy Secondary School, and history has not stopped being made yet. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not that I'm controversial. I'm original. I know <laughs> people, people are critical of those things they do not understand or they have not yet experienced. We're all afraid of the dark. So, but I think what AVW is doing, it brings a light to, to a greater number of people. And uh, the children will be taught the entire cognitive program. Um, and they, 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 they wouldn't have to worry about having any gaps in their knowledge based on this thing. So 18th of October. Is it October 12th? 12th, 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 
I, I'm not sure yet. I think I think the the union has sent out letters to its members and stuff. I'm not quite sure what response we've gotten yet. But I, I really I'm, I'm never too bothered about the numbers. I know Parks and I got 40. Uh, Spikes and we got 52. And in the board road we only have 16. But the numbers, whatever, who, whoever come me, and I think the the, the, the work we prepared, and we would we would take all comers. As the union tried to expand in its education services, and I was asked to work in a capacity to look at what some of the possibilities were. Two things that I think um, are noteworthy and worth mentioning and adding to this process. We're looking at starting the common entrance component, but what we're also looking to do is to allow students to have access to the full common entrance curriculum online. So eventually a student will be able to come on Saturdays, work with Jeff, and then continue that work during the rest of the week online, with back and forth with the parents and, and with, um, with whoever the tutors are. Because I think if we get a couple hundred, there are a number of volunteers who will be willing to come in with Jeff's direction and, and we'll be willing to, to work with, I think, as many parents who are willing to send their students. Jeff also mentioned the Second Chances Academy Institute. I think we're still trying to figure out what we might call it. But a lot of students leave secondary schools every year at 16 with very little certification. And I think there are hundreds of students who wouldn't mind coming back or who could be encouraged to come back another two or three years and work on certification. There's quite a bit of um, emphasis right now within the ministry looking at NVQs and CVQs that are, are more practical in their orientation. And I think as we look at planning down the road, um, we would like to have these certifications also online that students can access, and, um, along with the regular CXCs. And um, you can have a blend of face-to-face, of -face and then you could continue doing the work online with access to tutors and, and persons who are participating in, in the curriculum. So, I really would like to first um, thank Jeff for dragging me into this, <laughs> but also um, the ICBL today for, for their sponsorship and for their support of this program. I think it's a very worthy cause, and, and there are a lot of teachers up there who I know would not mind volunteering their service um, a couple hours a week, or even online, to support students who are trying to, to continue with their academics. I believe very strongly in ex exams. We have lived by it. I believe children. I believe children are brought to a point where you want to know what stage they're at. I have never been one that fully accepted one-off exams. So, uh, so I. But I. But people talk about the exam. Does this the exam? Does I do not think the exam does anything to anybody. I think the problem with the with, with the process is the allocation. What do you do when the children? would have passed the exam, would have sat the examination. Because we do exams in class one, class two, class three, class four, first form. We do exams at the end of every year. We do all the time. We different, and uh, we do CXC exams, which have been life chances, but which can impact your life chances. Those are one-off exams. Combinations does not impact anybody's life chances as far as I'm concerned. Because I dare anybody that did combinations when I did it. I went to Harrison College, they are better than me. They're not, I better than them. The only way for work. Because if you're going to walk around telling people that all schools are good, we are good schools, why are we so insistent that children who get 90 should go to these schools and children who get 20 should go to those schools? I want the people to believe strongly in two things. One, a component of the allocation process should be made up from continuous assessment. I've always been of you. I don't have a problem with the exam. We have a 40 or 50, even 60% of that mark going towards the But what did the child do in class one, class two, class three? That means nothing. Because a child may be doing very, very well. And unfortunately, a day or two before that examination, the child is ill, or there's a, there's a devastating um, tragedy behind the family. A child may impact it and, and perform not as well, but and, and, and failed accordingly or does not do as well and goes to school that was not focused on because we created that mentality in our children's heads that common entrance is about what school to go to. And if you don't go there, you cry. 
and all types of stuff. I was the, I don't, I, I, I don't recall, but it was easy for me. It would have been very, very easy for me when I did covenants, because as I look back now, as, as my family, I'm the very first person in my, in my grandmother's life ever go to secondary school. My grandmother never went past fourth standard. My mother never went to second school yet. So it was easy for me. But our children, we, we lifted our standards of position. Now. It can't be able to school. It, it, we, we have to have some criteria referencing to make sure children reach standards and that, that they are placed. I would like personally for children to be close to their home. It impacts a lot. It, it cuts on transportation costs. It, 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 it allows children to get more involved in sporting activities and stuff. Because I, so, you know, I'm an athlete. I've always been athlete all my life. And, um, and when, I, when I see children after at school, after hard day at school, and then athletic or cricket or football or what, netball or whatever practice, and then they, and then they have to try, take a bus in to get home six, seven o'clock. Tell me, are they putting the, the appropriate amount of study? Are they getting the appropriate amount of rest? They don't. 